Hey, Jack. Hi. How's it going? I'm doing okay. How you doing? Oh, I had a rough weekend. Never <clears throat> going to believe what I did. What'd you do? Did something that I shouldn't have did. You're kidding me. I, you you didn't. You going to resign? I attempted <laughs> a swap meet. You're ki oh, yeah. You by myself. Going. You're kidding me. Actually, I was supposed to meet another guy out there, and we were going to have fun and try it out, and he never showed up, so I was out there by myself. Sounds like he's pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I tell you what, man, that's a lot of work. Sure it is. It's hard, hard, hard work. I mean, you always told me it was hard work. Hard to believe. But until you it do it, you don't really realize it. It's true. So, um, first, first part of my hard work was actually figuring out what I was going to bring out there and load up my van. You know our road's under construction out here, so that's right. Means I had to run everything oh. down and up that hill. That made it uh, a little bit, a little bit more challenging than it had to be. But uh, I got that big white uh, forty Conoline van all loaded up. I mean, it was loaded up from the bottom to the top with how long did it take you? Junk. I'd say about two, two hours. Uh, while my kids were running around here screaming. You'll find and, uh, out that that's why you got married eventually. <laughs> yeah, I said, I see that helped so much. Um, and I finally got it loaded up. I woke up on time. I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning, head out to Cedar Lake. And it's a, it's a smaller market. It's called Barn and Field. And it's not right on the main road. There's, What's the cost of set up? Um, it costed uh, $8.00. And then they charged me for the tables because I I didn't bring my own table, so they, they gave me three tables. So all in all, it was twelve dollars. That's cheap. And it wasn't bad, but again, yeah, it's, it's not on the main drag. And uh, is that way a, back out there uh, from that John's or whatever? Yeah, it's that? near yeah, near that. Uncle John's, yep, but there's Uncle a John's. there's a detour that you got to come off of 41 and go. But it was a real nice place, real peaceful, kind of quiet. But as soon as I set up out there, the guy next to me said, "Hey, you're new here, you know. I just want to tell you." This is a one to five dollar market. You're not going to sell anything, you know, over five bucks. So thought you should know that before we get started. Sounds like a real uh, go get it, right? <laughs> well, so I, honestly, the stuff that I I just want to get rid of it. I don't care if I get between one and five dollars. That's fine, as long as I can get rid of it all. I just didn't want to have to load it back up. Um, so anyway, the, one of the the bigger things I had there was this big brass. Uh, Lantern. I don't know if it was from a ship or what, but the glass was cracked in it. It was all rusty, and uh, it was cool though. It was old, and a lot of people were, you know, looking at it as soon as they put it out. Well, then he came over to me and he said, uh, "How much you want for that? I want to buy it for my house. I want to hang it in my house." <laughs> and uh, I said, "Well, I guess five bucks." And he bought it for five bucks. Ten minutes later. He sold it to somebody else for 15 bucks, right in front of me. He was right yeah, next to he's me. He's a pro. But, uh, so I guess you can sell stuff for more than five bucks at a swap meet. Sure. Huh? Not only that, there's another thing we need to make a video on. Don't listen to the people next to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my first time, so I'll take my hits. I was out there. You could tell my neck is completely yep. red. Yep. Uh, and uh, I got uh, $74.00. Minus my twelve dollars for the spot. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it was kind of kind of discouraging money wise. I didn't know what to do. Um, people were picking stuff up, saying how much you want for this, and I would say a buck, just because I didn't want to have to load it back up. So I was basically saying everything a buck. I probably sold seventy four items <laughs> because <laughs> all my stuff was going for a buck. But um, can't, should you put prices on this stuff before you even go out there? I never did. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Especially if I'm going to a new swap meet or a new uh, flea market. And the re they'll swarm you. If you got price tags on it, they know that you're a pro or that you've been doing it for a while. And they're not. They're less likely to come to you. If you go to a swap meet where they don't know you, I would never put a price on it. Really? Yeah, basically weigh them up as they come in. You know, hey, $10. And if they uh, try to put it down, uh, break their arm. No. Say, so, hey, I'll take five or three, you know, whatever you want to do, especially if you want to get rid of it. And that's what I do now. When I do go out, I go to get rid of the things that I've had. In other words, they're all paid for anyway. But a lot of people like to put prices on them. If you're inside, that's fine. If you're outside, uh, I just never did. I never did it outside. When I had the store, I, of, course, of course I put prices on it. And at the auction, I'd have to take the price stickers off of it. It's all okay. the auction. Okay. But I just never cared for it. A lot of people like to price it. But I never had any trouble. I was successful as anybody could ever be and never put a price tag on it. I don't like price tags. Okay, so now it sounds like my mistake then was 
going right at the dollar mark as soon as they picked up the item. Along with listening to the guy next to you. <laughs> yeah, along with listening to <laughs> So Remember I told you how I used to go out and buy stuff? I'd go out to the swap meet, a flea market with nothing, me and Elizabeth. And we'd get out and go buy stuff and set up on the tables. Well, we'd bring us tables. Remember, now you can see that, that that works. Well, apparently that's what he was doing. You know, he, he gave me the story he wanted it for his house, but he didn't actually put it out on his table. He put it back by his car. You always do that if you want to sell something a little better. But somebody I saw it, and they went went back by his car, and then he, he did the deal. So maybe he was intending to take it home. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so when you when you go out there, they got prices on nothing. Somebody picks something up and says, how much you want for this? Five bucks. So you start out at five bucks. That's just like Even if you it. only want to get a buck for it. Well, five or four. Yeah, I'll get something for a buck. I'll say a five or three. And then uh, go ahead and try to set it down. Don't do that. What's wrong? What's it worth? Well, <laughs> I'll give you a buck up. for it. Get your money out. Okay, so you start out a little bit higher than you want. Give yourself a little play and uh, room to play. And then go down to a buck if you need yeah. to. But bottom line, yeah. you want to sell it. But get as much as you can for That's it. right. Uh, so if I would have got two bucks for everything I sold, I might have made 150 bucks. That would have been a lot more worthwhile for the day. Yeah, the more items you sell, stop and think about that. That does add up. That's a very good way to look at it. You kind of like if you're trying to get a buck or two something, I'll ask five or four, and then uh, cut it in half. You know, uh, and tell them to, uh, when they offer a buck or two, say, uh, "What are you waiting on?" And they'll say, "What?" And say, "Where's the money?" <laughs> yeah, me two bucks. Okay, what if I got a whole bunch of the same item and I just want to get rid of them? Like in this instance, I had two big bins worth of stuffed animals that I had no money into at all. They were, you know, drawing the kids' attention. Is it okay to put a price on, on that kind of stuff? Sure. So just put a real low price. Like in my case, I put two for a dollar. Yeah, and sure it's okay. You know, the parents seem to be happy to see that they could get two kids' gifts and only spend a dollar and keep the sure. kids quiet. If you got a lot of something, you know, and um, I, I don't have nothing against pricing, I just don't like it. But in a case like that, it, 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 that helps. It helps bring people in if it's a blow-up price. But in general, most of the stuff on your table, leave it without a price. I don't, I don't, I negotiate hate price it. tags. It's a, it's a flea market, spot me. Looks more professional when you're doing that. Stop and think about this. When you see somebody coming out to the, the flea market or spot me, you see them coming in the truck and you see all these people following the truck or the car. That's because they're people that probably brought it from a garage or their basement. They didn't price that stuff. And all those dealers know that. They know that those people are real vulnerable as far as selling it goes. Okay. Some people like a price they say that people won't pick it up or they'll walk by it. If somebody likes something, they'll pick it up, put it in the bank. Okay. And then you got to talk to them. Of course, I like talking to people. You know, I like, uh, I like playing with words and goofing around with them. I got a favor. Sure. Can I go out with you? Yeah, yeah. I'd, and I'd bring my fun. stuff, and I'll just sit in the background, like a fly on the wall, yep. and just watch. Maybe I could bring a video camera. Yeah, and sure. Sneak some videos in sure. to help the, help our uh, followers out sure. too. Sure, I, I enjoy that. But it's talking to them. Just don't let them put it down, you know. Uh, and you can tell if they if they, if they grab something and like this, and they hold it, and you, they figure out how much for this, and say you say uh, five bucks, and they go like this and put it down by them and keep holding them. They're interested. Okay, you so, know. so, so they, don't drop they didn't put it back dollar, where it yeah, was, they kept four. it closer to that. Well, what about four dollars? Or if they put it back down like that, as a rule, they really don't want it, you know. Or they just set it down and turn around and walk away, you know. And usually they don't want it anyway. But the closer they keep, some people won't let it out of their hands. You know, when they don't let it out of their hands and they say, well, would you take two dollars? Then you got a good shot at saying, well, I'm asking five. I'd really like to get five of it, but I'll meet you halfway, four. And they'll say, that's not halfway. <laughs> It was close, and then you know, let them let, let them talk. That's interesting. So you're actually watching their body language as much as oh, what they yeah. say. Oh yeah, yeah. You can tell when somebody likes something. I sold that animation. I told you about it. That guy gave me a big number for it, but I knew I was getting held up. I felt like putting my hands up in the air like this because I could tell by the way he was looking when he was looking at all that animation of Virgil Ross's. I knew that he was getting me. Okay. Um, how about you know? I had three tables set up across. Should I? Theme the tables like all knickknacky things on one table, marbles on another table, toys on another table, or just mix and match. What What do you think? What's a better setup on the tables? Well, when I used to go with Elizabeth, she had that gold and silver and the jewelry, and you can see from those photos that we've had on there for people to watch our videos, she was real neat. She had a little basket of gold, a little basket of silver, and all that. I'm a little different, you know. I just throw it out there. I okay. never. 
never very fancy or anything. Matter of fact, sometimes it just there may could be anything up there. Occasionally, like with marbles or something like that. If I got a bunch of them, I'll put them in one place. You know, one item. But, or all the old stuff in one place. But I don't have no real standard order. I know that most people, a lot of people, like to keep it real neat and all that. But uh, I figured that if I was going to keep it real neat and wash it and clean it and price it and wrap it and unwrap it and load it and unload it, that's why I got a store so I could do it once and let it sit there until somebody bought it. Okay. Um, one last question. That guy next to me that was giving me the advice. <laughs> yes. He uh, he had his trunk open and the radio playing a bunch of oldies. Is that a good uh, strategy, or is, I mean, because it's making noise to bring people attention to your booth, or is it what, bad? Was because, it real loud? Or was it uh, offensive? No, I would call it medium. I mean, it kind of like you might hear at a store when you were shopping at it or something. I, I do that a lot. I like music. I like old time rock and roll. And I'll play it and you know, but keep it low and so you can still talk to your people and sure. it doesn't get in the as way. As long as they can hear you. Okay. Was anybody, did anybody out there uh, on the midway, did they start dancing? I didn't see anybody dancing, but the I did hear... The music was probably lousy. <laughs> no, I did hear a lot of people say you got good music sure. to them, you know. So, old time rock and roll? Yeah, old time rock and Older roll. Older crowd, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Some uh, Johnny Cash, Elvis yep. Presley, you know, stuff yep, like that. Good stuff. So, so that's good not stuff. a bad strategy. He taught no. me one good thing. Yeah, that is, that, it is good. You got to keep it low. And some people will be offended, but as a rule, as long as it's low, people like it. They like old music. Remember that one I had in Chicago, where the music was real loud. It was two hours away. Yes, it was yes, real loud. Yeah, La Bamba. That's too loud. Yeah, La Bamba. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was that guy that sells all the music, but he does it because he sells music, and it doesn't seem to bother him. People come up. I don't know. Kind of whatever makes you comfortable and works for you. There's no absolutes. You know. You know that. Like me, I hate cleaning something, pricing it, packing it, wrapping it. Uh, I've had a uh, hundred dollar piece of Roseville or uh, a high Z glass. That I just take out and throw on the table, not even wrap. People, what are you crazy? <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, I really appreciate you uh, letting me come along with you next time because I I never been with you all this time. I've never been out to a swap meet with you. So um, it's harder than it looks physically, mentally, and uh, it's like a game of chess. On top of that, and you're competing with all those people out there that are selling stuff on top of it. But uh, you can make a great living at it. But you can hey, make a great living. Despite the fact I made no money, I did enjoy it. So yeah, it's fun. I will do it again for it's sure. It's fun to get out there and see if you can tell the biggest stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack. Thanks again, man. Okay. See you later.